Hello, I'm Ida Bagarza. You're watching the Edinburgh Cable Network. And today we are going to be talking about something quite interesting and maybe a little bizarre at the same time. Uh, we are going to be talking about UFOs. Uh, joining me in the studio, we have Dr. Robert Gross uh, with UTPA. We've got Leti Leha. She is our library director. And we've got Noe Torres. And we've got Al the Alien as well. And if we're lucky, he might even give us a few words. Thank you all so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, Leti, we are getting ready for... I think this is the second annual. I know you mentioned it was going to be the first annual, you know, uh, in talking to the uh, council, but we actually had a UFO conference last year. Maybe not of the magnitude that, that you all are gearing up for the one coming up uh, in just a week, uh, but this is going to be the second time that we have a convergence of unidentified people and things. <laughs> Yes, actually, well, we first our very first um, little conference that we had was at the library, and we were gearing up to have a, you know a few people show up, and it was standing room only, and that was in February February of last year, and it was so, so successful that we thought we'd invite Noe Torres again in um, as part of our Halloween events in August, and we were hoping that well we'd get a good crowd, well it was standing room only at the city auditorium which sits. 700 people. So we were very excited that we said we have to do it uh, in, in a bigger venue. So this uh, this time around, we're going to be having it at the Edinburgh Conference Center on March 15th. It's going to be an all-day conference, and we're very excited to be able to do that. Th this is one of those topics that either you get it or you don't get it. You've got your believers and your non-believers, uh, and 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 it's happening because I've told people, you know, we're having a UFO conference in Edinburgh, and they're like. You are, and then I've mentioned it to others, and it's like, really? When is it? You know. Mm -hmm. So you've got both kinds. Um, is, is that normal? That is very normal. As a matter of fact, um, <laughs> Noe and I were just talking about how the believers are going to be excited to be able to, to hear some of these uh, outstanding experts that are going to be here for the conference, and the non-believers are just going to have fun. And we're, you know, and that's why we're also having a festival where we're going to have a costume contest, uh, music vendors, and. You know, they can come with an open mind, and if they want to believe, that's great. And if they don't, they'll just have lots of fun. Very good. Now, this is a two-day event, yes. and it is happening March 15th and 16th. And we've got two separate locations. Explain. Yes. On the 15th, we're going to be having our all-day conference from 8 in the morning till actually 9.30 p.m. And it's a lot, going to be a long day, but it's going to be jam-packed with a lot of outstanding UFO experts that are going to be coming to talk to the people that uh, come to the conference about what they've experienced and uh, with the UFO sightings, their testimonials. Uh, we actually have one uh, abductee who has, uh, there's a movie based on, on his story. But all the details, I'm going to uh, Noe, give a little bit more of the details later. Okay. Well, Noe, this is your second year with us. Uh, you participated last year, and you're back again this year. What role will you be playing? Well, I have helped uh, organize the conference and arrange for the speakers. I travel all over the country myself um, talking about the UFO cases that I have investigated. I have published eight books about UFOs, and um, I travel the UFO conference circuit around the country. I appear annually at the Roswell UFO conference in the summer in Roswell, New Mexico, which is probably the largest in the world. And I've made a lot of contacts with people in the UFO community, such as Stanton Friedman, who's mm -hmm. speaking at our conference, and Travis Walton will have more to say about them. But um, being that I was born here in Edinburgh and I live here in Edinburgh, you know, I thought it would be cool to bring some of the what I see happening in other parts of the country with the UFO festivals, with people getting excited about, you know, studying the, about the possibility of life on other planets and about, uh, you know, speculating about the day that we'll be able to travel in interstellar distances. I thought it would be so nice to bring this atmosphere and this excitement here to the valley as, as a cultural event and something that families can get excited about and that all of us can learn from. Whether or not we believe that UFOs are extraterrestrial air, uh, uh, spacecraft or not, that's beside the point. The important thing is that we're learning and growing as individuals. We're exploring areas that we don't normally focus on. Right. And everybody has a great time, from my observation, at going 
going to these various events. Okay. And, and Dr. Gross, let's uh, talk to me a little bit about what is involved in when you say a UFO. What exactly are, are, are we talking about? In a UFO, it's got to be something, it's got to be a craft that's it's flying, it's in the air, and it's unidentifiable. As far as we can tell through any kind of scientific observation or measurement, it's not something that you would normally see in the sky, and you can't identify it as something that you typically would look at, like a planet or the sun or an airplane, something like that. And how did you get into UFOs? Well, that started back in, actually, as, as I, I was young, when I was interested in this type of thing, but in 1980, uh, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I co-wrote a musical that was based on the paranormal, and it won second place in the country as a children's musical, and I could tell the children were very interested in it. Yeah. In 1984, this is going back quite a while, <laughs> but uh, I was... Uh, oh, I earned a doctorate degree from Penn State University, and that degree had, was an awarded an excellent uh, award for the uh, rating because it used a, a type of very advanced analysis. And so I was traveling around Pennsylvania uh, demonstrating the uh, experiment that I had done. And as a result, in 1985, I was asked to join a it would be considered a scientific research organization in Pennsylvania because of my research background and they were, re uh, they were re um, researching combinations between paranormal phenomena and natural phenomena and then in 1989 I did have a close encounter of the first kind of my own in Pennsylvania and the experience there I noticed a lot of things that were happening and I've been trying to link this to uh, what's known as the multiple intelligence theory in the experiences that I've had. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened and what you saw? <laughs> okay, well this again was back in 1989. I, wasn't, I was a field investigator for the Pennsylvania Association for the Study of the Unexplained, but I wasn't investigating anything at the time. I was actually auditioning a band by the name of Uptown Larry to hire them as part of an arts uh, event that I was the uh, performing arts chairperson for. And on the way back from the audition of the group, and I had a, uh, I don't want to go into the whole detail, but I had a passenger. We'll save me. it for the, yes. for the event. <laughs> and basically, as we were driving, uh, there was an object that was behind one of the guardrails, and it rose up, and it eventually flew over my car. And it was, I had a, a moonroof in the car, and the object was, it was radiating a green color like on a, a luminous watch dial. And we both lit up uh, inside the car, and it was about eight or ten inches away. And then I just experienced what your mind goes through when you have that type of experience that you really can't explain to yourself. Yeah, I don't know about y'all, but I just got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> should have been there. Exactly, exactly. Now... No, we when when you talk about you know you grew up here you you're yes. from here. What he experienced, I'm sure there has been experiences here in the valley as well. Oh, there have been many uh, very interesting encounters in the valley over the years. Um, one of the reasons that I became involved in UFO research is as a child, my mom would t uh, tell me a, a very frightening story uh, about an encounter that she had in a dark woods at night uh, in the 1940s when she was a, you know, a young person. And she used to tell me, you know, that there was this uh, light and noise above her head and she, was, she had gone out the back door of our house out into the woods alone at night, in the middle of the night. She had been aw uh, awoken by uh, the sound of animals being agitated, the dogs barking. And when she went out there, there was a strange object, and there were lights. And try as she might, she could not move her head up to look to see what was above her. And she said that uh, while this object or entity, whatever it was, was above her, she felt a great feeling of oppression come over her. And so being a religious person, she got down on her knees and began to pray. And the 
there were two dogs that she owned at the time, and they were making a circle around her, jumping up in the air and snapping their jaws at whatever was above her. Um, so after a few minutes, the lights turned off, everything became still, and the dogs stopped barking, and it was over. But she, you know, when she used to tell me this when I was a, a small child, uh, I was just, you know, it would just, as you say, it really frightened me and sent chills down my spine. So when uh, I would go to the school library and I would check out every book on UFOs, and that's, this was in the 1960s when UFOs were really a very much of a uh, more uh, a hot topic back then, more so than today. Uh, but that. Uh, encounter that my mom had uh, that she told very few people about is really typical of many experiences that Valley people have had. Uh, here in Edinburgh, for example, we've had several significant UFO events um, that uh, one of our speakers, Mr. Stephen Andrasco, is going to be talking about in his uh, lecture called The South Texas X-Files. Uh, many of your viewers, I'm sure, remember the TV show The X-Files. Mm -hmm. And basically, every every week they were looking at a paranormal event. Of course, most of it was fictional. Some of it was based on true ev experiences. But Mr. Andrasco is going to talk about specific, detailed UFO sightings in Edinburgh and in surrounding communities. Um, for example, just briefly, and and folks will have to come to the event to really hear the details that he's been working on. But uh, there was a lady from Edinburgh who got up in the middle of the night because there was a bright light that seemed to be emanating from her backyard. Well, she went outside. She was alone in the house. She went outside to take a closer look, and it was farther away than she thought it was at first. So she got in. She felt motivated to get in her car, and she drove, kept driving along. She went west on, on Freddy Gonzalez, and then she went north on, on McCall, and then she went west on 107, and the light was still far away. Well, she ended up near more the Moore Air Base, the deactivated Air Force Base, uh, northwest of Edinburgh. And it was there she, she had an encounter with about a 60-foot diameter uh, disc that was hovering over the road. So, and that happened just this past year in March. And so... It, we've had an amazing number of UFO encounters right here all around us. Unfortunately, though, a lot of times people do not want to speak. Right. They fear ridicule. They feel that other people will think that they're crazy. Mm -hmm. But the, the strange thing about it is whenever we do any sort of UFO event, we have people lined up that stay for hours afterward to tell us of their own experiences. This goes way past the local legend of the Yorona. Uh, you know, this is this is this is very different um, and tangible. Um, okay, so these are just a few of uh, you know the stories uh, that you will be able to to listen to. Uh, tell me one more about what is going to be happening during those two days, Letty. Um, I, I know you've got some great speakers coming. Uh, you know, two of which we have sitting right here. Uh, but what else will people be able to do? Well, uh, on Saturday we'll be having a festival, and on Saturday, on Saturday we'll be having uh, more of the public story, the a public forum to hear the local stories, and we'll have a festival with music. Like I said, a costume contest, and we'll be giving prizes for the most creative and the TV character, the TV personality, alien personality, and then uh, um, so we'll, we're inviting the public to dress up, come and have a good time here at the festival. There will be plenty of food and music and activities, but and uh, and they can attend the public forum from five to seven. Okay. But the ones that if they really want to hear all the details, hear those amazing um, speakers that will be here, I encourage them to buy a ticket and come to our call day conference because we'll have high caliber experts talking, like uh, Stanton Friedman. Would you like to know we talk, tell a little bit of, talk a little bit about Stanton Friedman? Yes, yeah, Stanton Friedman is the world's top UFO expert, just to put it simply. And I brought a couple of his books. Uh, he's going to be speaking, in fact, on this particular book that I have here called Flying Saucers and Science. Uh, Mr. Stanton Friedman is a nuclear physicist. Uh, in the 1960s and 70s, he worked on spaceship designs, top secret spaceship engine designs for the U.S. government. 
and he has been studying the UFO phenomena since the 1950s. Uh, this is a gentleman who has looked at basically all of the major UFO incidents that have occurred in the United States and Canada. He is from Canada uh, since the 1950s. Uh, he has appeared before the U.S. Congress. He has provided testimony about UFOs to the U.S. Congress and has appeared at the United Nations to testify about UFOs twice. Uh, he was the, um, this is his, one of his latest books called Flying Saucers and Science, and he'll be talking about this book in particular at our conference. He also um, wrote a book called Captured, which is the story of the Betty and Barney Hill abduction, which occurred in the 1960s, uh, where a couple from Massachusetts were taken aboard a flying saucer. And what's interesting about this story is that one of the, one of the two individuals that was abducted, uh, Betty Hill, uh, when she was taken aboard the UFO, she was shown a map, a star map, which she later reproduced, just sketched it out, you know, after the incident. And uh, everybody, you know, she had uh, scientists and astronomers look at that, and they said, there's, there's no such star system or galaxy. Well, about 10 years later, scientists discovered that galaxy, that star system that she had drawn that was shown to her aboard the UFO. But the interesting thing about it is, is that the view of it was from reverse. So in other words, it was from somebody way out in space looking back toward Earth and seeing the star system. So they had to reverse the view, and the system that she was shown hadn't even been discovered. So Stanton Friedman uh, is a nuclear physicist. Uh, part of his discussion will be uh, he, ha he will talk about the top secret work that he did on spaceship mm -hmm. engines, and he will demonstrate that we already have um, on paper the capability to fly to, the, to, to travel to the nearest star systems within a person's lifetime. Uh, we have the capability to travel at near the speed of light, and we can get to some of the nearest star systems within one person's lifetime. He is a fascinating uh, person uh, to listen to. I've listened to him many times. He's, uh, as soon as he gets done in Edinburgh, he's going to go uh, and speak at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. Uh, he is what you would consider a heavyweight uh, on many levels. He's, he's a fantastic person also. On a personal level, I've known him. And so we are very fortunate to get Stanton Friedman to come speak in Edinburgh, and I hope uh, people appreciate, you know, what a, what a fantastic privilege it is to have him. And, of course, we can talk about Travis Walton in a little bit. Yeah. If you and, and that is happening on Friday? That, all of that is happening on okay. Friday. Dr. Friedman is here. Okay. Yes. okay. And um, you know, let, let's talk about uh, Travis Walton because... Um, yeah. Uh, Stanton Friedman, one last thing about him, he will be actually speaking twice at our okay. conference. Um, we wanted to kind of spread the wealth so that if people can't make it to some of the conference, they can come later. So Stanton has a talk in the morning at around 10 o'clock, and he's going to be talking uh, uh, in the morning about flying saucers and science. Mm -hmm. And then he's also speaking in the afternoon uh, about a new view of the cosmos. And in his second talk, in his afternoon talk, which I believe is at about 3, people can check our website for the exact times, but at around 3, uh, his second talk is about a new view of the cosmos, which is simply there have been so many discoveries of new Earth-type planets. You know, the Kepler spacecraft that NASA has sent out uh, has determined that instead of perhaps a few planets that are like Earth, there are now possibly billions in our galaxy alone. Well, when you multiply that by the number of galaxies that scientists believe exist out there, which is in the neighborhood of 500 billion, so if you have billions of Earth-type planets in our galaxy alone multiplied by 500 billion, what are the chances that Earth is the only planet where intelligent life has developed? And Stanton gives a tremendous presentation on just the sheer numbers and the weight of the statistics tell you that there has to be life out there. 
And if there's intelligent life out there, some of it could be possibly thousands or even millions of light years more advanced than us technologically. So to us, it seems like such a hurdle to travel at near the speed of light. To them, it could be like getting in a car and going to the neighborhood convenience store. Mm -hmm. You know, literally. When you look at it from the perspective of scientists and Stanton being a physicist, he can tell you, I mean, he tells you, he puts it all out on how it is possible. It's definitely so, going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's life change. It, it's life changing to listen to Stanton. It really is. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention about Stan is he was the, a lot of people have heard about the Roswell incident, mm -hmm. the supposed crash of a flying saucer near Roswell, New Mexico. Stanton was the one who actually brought this to the public light in 1978. He broke the story of Roswell and he wrote the first book about the Roswell incident. You know, subsequent to that, there have been, you know, hundreds of TV shows, documentaries, movies, books, but Stanton was the original investigator of the Roswell incident. So he always talks about, you know, his work on Roswell when he speaks. Our second speaker, which we're all very excited about, is Travis Walton. Um, Travis Walton, in 1975, was with a group of six other men, and they were lumberjacks uh, working in a forest in northern Arizona. And um, they were just going about the regular duties, and it was near the end of the day, and the evening was setting in. And when all of a sudden they saw this huge, bright, illuminated flying disc descend from out of the sky and hover above the, the forest near where they were in their pickup truck driving past going home for the day. Well, Travis, for some reason, felt motivated to get out of the truck and approach this object. As his six companions watched, Travis, you know, and they were trying to persuade him to get back because they perceived that they're, you know, they were afraid and perceived there could be danger. Travis moved right up and stood underneath this huge glowing circular disk. All of a sudden, there was this uh, bright blue flash of light, and a beam of light struck, um, struck Travis full in the chest and sent him flying for at least 60 feet, and where he struck the back of his head on a large boulder, and he lay prone on the ground. His companions got very scared, and so they closed the door of the tr pickup truck, and they took off. Uh, back back to the nearest town. Well, as it turns out, Travis was missing for five days. Law enforcement did a full-scale search of the forest. They could not find them. They arrested, they came near to arresting the men because they thought the men had I killed him something. and hidden his body. Well, when Travis got back five days later, he told an amazing story. And he, he said that he had been aboard a craft and there had been some medical procedures done by some strange beings. It's an incredible story, and I have heard other people tell it, but I never really heard the story until I heard Travis mm -hmm. himself tell it, because he lived through it, and you can see it in him as he tells it. You can see the emotion come back. It, it's, it's, it's an amazing... It's a great movie. Uh, yeah. And the movie, as they say, truth is stranger in fi than fiction. The truth is even stranger than the movie, as people will hear from hearing Travis talk. So Travis it, it does a great job of speaking, and then he also mingles with with the folks. He, he assigns books for them. He takes and pictures. And he'll be here what day? Them. He'll be here all, all day Friday, okay. and he'll he is our keynote speaker. So we'll be showing the movie Fire in the Sky. Um, Thanks, courtesy of the Destin Secular Library, uh, they acquired rights to okay. show the movie. And um, after the movie, then um, Travis will speak. Very good. At, at, a, at 7.30. Dr. Gross, who is this conference for? It's for everyone in the, in the community. Uh, I strongly believe in, in the research I've done that everyone has a little bit of that curiosity about uh, things that are existential, above and beyond science, above and beyond normal. 
And the things we've been talking about today are basically considered paranormal, which just means beside the normal. And all that really means today, as far as I'm concerned, is that it's things that science has not yet been able to measure or observe. And I think of it kind of like as the uh, iceberg theory, where the tip of the iceberg is science, underneath the, uh, underneath the water line is the paranormal, and the whole iceberg is reality. So whether you're a believer, non-believer, or just you know, somebody who's curious, there'll be a little something for you, and you will get something out of attending. Yes, because as far as I'm concerned, the paranormal is the new normal. Ms. Letty, and, and this is a two-day event happening March 15th and 16th. For more information? For more information, they can you know, visit uh, our website, which is uh, edinburghufo.com, where they can find the schedule of the speakers. They can find more information on everything that's happening on both days. Or they can also call the library at 383-6246 or the Edinburgh Chamber of Commerce. And we're selling tickets. The tickets for the, for the all-day conference is $15. Very, a very moderate price, and uh, we do have reserved uh, seating for uh, thirty dollars. Uh, but you know, please get your tickets early because they're flying off the, out the door. I understand you've got calls from all over the, yes. the world. <laughs> yeah, we're we're excited. We're excited because we're getting a lot of calls, and we're excited to be able to provide this for our community here in Edinburgh. Very good, and you know, of course, you've got Al, and you're going to have T-shirts, and you know, you've got these great, um, you know. Uh, this is a souvenir program. Right. It's already being sold on Amazon.com if they if they want to purchase it ahead of time, so they can bring it. The uh, special guests will be able to sign it, but they'll also be uh, sold there at the conference. And, uh, you know, it's something that they can keep, and it, it includes uh, information on the speakers, and it also has a story of a local sighting here in, in Edinburgh. I read that. I read that, and I was like, hmm, mm -hmm. that's right in our backyard. <laughs> yes, and it, it's uh, very nice, and, and this was thanks to... Noe, who was amazingly, you know, uh, got it done, and next thing you know, it has been sold on Amazon. And like I, said, uh, I wanted, did want to mention, you know, we've heard from people. Once they hear that Stanton Friedman is going to be our guest, and they see what we've done so far, they know that this is going to be a top-notch uh, conference. So uh, uh, please, if uh, if y'all can come, join us. It's going to be fun. And you can contact either the uh, library or you can contact the Edinburgh Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is a, a big partner as well uh, for this conference. And the Economic Development Corporation. Very good. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being with us. Uh, we look forward to next week. And let's see what little outfits we're going to be wearing. But uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be out of this world is actually what it's <laughs> going to world. be. So exactly. <laughs> thank you all so much. And we will see you all next week at, yeah. the, at the conference. Thank, thank you for having us. And thank you for watching the Edinburgh Cable Network. I'm Irma Garza.